Hey guys, welcome back for another video. We got a good one prepared today. What we'll be doing is we'll be doing our quick picks for all of our NFL games for week 14 of the 2024 NFL football season. We're going to quickly break down every single game, look over the matchup, try to predict the outcome. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? What the final score will be? We'll also touch on the best bets, the money lines, the spreads, the over-unders. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any comments, please drop them below and I will respond. Every week we go over every single NFL game. We also do the same thing for every college football game as well the top 25 and the non-top 25 and we have the college football playoffs coming up soon if you're a football fan if you're a sports fan make sure to hit that like button make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can follow along with us this season we already have the thursday night game in the books we had the detroit lions beating the packers that is what happened but this is going to be our quick picks we're going to quickly run through those sunday matchups and our monday night game let's go ahead and get started we're going to run through these really fast kicking things off on sunday on Fox at 1 p.m. You have the 6-6 six and six Atlanta Falcons, fully rested right now, coming off the bye versus the 10-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings have been playing hot football on both sides of the ball. Right now, the Vikings have a 62.8% chance to win this game. They are six-point favorites. The over in here is 45 and a half. Falcons, one of the most loaded offensive rosters. We just need to see a complete, clean game out of Kirk Cousins. He's closing on 3,100 yards, 17 touchdowns, 13 picks. You got to keep the picks down versus the Vikings defense. They're averaging 21.4, giving up 24.3. They have Bijan Robinson. They have Algiers, Mooney, London, Pitts, multiple weapons for him to spread the ball out to. Just keep those turnovers down. And for the Vikings, obviously, Sam Darno having a great season right now, closing in on 3,000 yards himself. They're averaging 24.8, giving up 18.3. They only give up 81.3 on the ground. They're going to look to shut down the Falcons' run game, forcing them to have to beat them vertically through the air, which means that Kirk Cousins could potentially have some turnovers there. Vikings have a really good defense, and they have the offense. They are at home. I have the Vikings winning a close one here, 27-23. And then at 1 p.m. on Fox are the 4-8 and eight New Orleans Saints who are playing better football in the last three weeks. They'll be playing the 2-10 and 10 New York Giants. The Giants are basically leaderless. They're under the third quarterback this season, Locke. And for the Saints, they're going to be going with Carr. The Saints have a really good roster. It's just trying to get everyone to have a good game at the same time on both sides of the ball. They have a 65.7% chance with this game. They are four-point favorites. The over under here is 40 and a half. Carr is closing in on 2,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, four picks. They're averaging 23 points. Point zero points per game. They're giving up 23.4. The main issue for them is they're very Alvin Kamara-centric. He's closing in on 900 yards rushing, 500 yards receiving. They need someone else besides Olave also to step up at those positions to take the burden off. You need more playmakers. And for the Giants, they have Tracy Jr. They have Neighbors. Neighbors is a really good wide receiver, but he needs a quarterback who can consistently get him the ball. They're averaging 15.3. One of the bottom three offenses in the NFL. They're giving up 23.3. But this is a game where their defense could potentially get them the win but I have the Saints continuing to stay hot for the last month winning this one 26 to 17 and then our next game on Fox at 1 p.m. the 3-9 and nine Carolina Panthers, who are no longer the worst team in the NFL. Props to them. Bryce Young, since he's come back as the starter, has actually been playing a lot better football. They'll be playing the 10-2 and two Philadelphia Eagles, one of the hottest teams in the NFL. They are playing playoff caliber offense and defense right now. The number one rushing team in the NFL. They have an 85.7% chance to win this game. 13-point favorites. Massive NFL spread here. The over-under is 45-and-a-half. Obviously, Bryce Young... Playing better as of late. They're averaging 18.1. They're throwing for 187, running for 105, giving up 30.5 points a game. Still the worst statistical defense in the NFL, but they are playing better. They have Chuba Hubbard. He's the X factor here. Everyone knows he's going to run, and yet still he's closing in on 1,000 yards. He's their primary playmaker. For the Eagles, they are loaded at every single position. They just have to make sure they keep those turnovers down. That was the issue they had second half of last season. So far this year, though, they've been playing turnover-free football. They have a top-five offense, averaging 26.7, running for 188.8, throwing for 188.9. The most balanced offense in the NFL. They're only giving up 18.2 points per game. That's a top-eight defense as well. They have Barkley, one yard shy of 1,500. He might get 2,000. They have A.J. Brown, Smith. They have Hurts, one of the best offensive rosters. They're going to run through this game. They win at 33-18, to 18, but still, that's a pretty big NFL spread. 
And then at 1 p.m. on CBS, the 3-9 and nine New York Jets. The Jets are just what a disappointment they are this season versus the 5-7 and seven Miami Dolphins. Don't judge them by the record. Since they've gotten Tua back, they actually have a top five offense. They're playing a lot better with Tua on the field distributing the ball. They have a 57.2% chance doing this game. Five and a half point favorites. The over in here is 44 and a half. Rodgers. Rodgers isn't having a bad season, but they need better play from their wide receiver core, and they got to get the run game going. They need to open up the play action. He's closing in on 2,700 yards, 19 touchdowns, 8 picks. They're averaging 18.8, but they're only running for 87.3 yards a game. They're giving up 22.3. They also obviously have coaching issues. And for the Dolphins, two is closing in on 2,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, 4 picks. They're averaging 19.3. That number is coming up as two is back, and they're giving up 22.2. They do have a top five run defense. They're going to look to just force the Jets into third and long situations. For the Jets, they have Brees Hall, Wilson, Lazard, Adams. Miami's loaded. Achen, Mostert, Hill, Waddle, Berrios, Beckham, multiple weapons. Their offense is clicking right now. They don't want to take this divisional loss. They win it 27 to 20, and they continue to chip their way back to 500. And then on CBS at 1 p.m., you have the 3 and 9 Cleveland Browns versus the 9 and 3 Pittsburgh Steelers. Right now, the Steelers wanting to get revenge for that loss they had a couple weeks ago. Right now, the Steelers have a 59.4% chance to win this game, 6.5 point favorites. The over in here is 43.5. For the Browns, they don't have a bad roster, but what game are you going to get out of Jameis Winston? Will it be a 3 to 4 touchdown game? Will it be a 3 to 4 pick game? As of right now, they're averaging 18.2, obviously playing a lot better than Deshaun Watson was, and they're giving up 25.7, but they do have a really Really good defense. It's just they're on the field the entire game. For the Steelers, they have Russell Wilson. They're averaging 24.7. This is a Tomlin team. They run the ball. They play elite playoff caliber defense, only giving up 18.7 points a game, only 90.5 on the ground. They have Najee Harris. Expect a steady dose of Harris. And then you have Pickens for those certain long situations. I have the Steelers winning this one. Every game is a one possession game for them, no matter if they win or lose. They win this in a one possession game. They win it 23 to 18. And then at 1 p.m. on CBS, the 2-10 and 10 Las Vegas Raiders. Let's call it what it is. They're not good at anything. They don't have a good offense. They don't have a good defense. They're just shuffling through quarterbacks. They're playing the 6-6 six and six Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, they're down Godwin, but they did get Evans back. That's a massive upgrade for that young wide receiver core. They're, they have a 68.7% chance to win this game. They are 6.5-point favorites. The over in here is 46.5. Baker Mayfield picked up right where he left off last season. One of the best passing teams in, in the nation, even without Godwin. He's closing in on 31 yards, 25 touchdowns, 11 picks. The Raiders only average 18.6. They're giving up 27.8. One of the worst defenses in the NFL by far, and they're only running for 78 yards per game. For Tampa Bay, they're averaging 27.9. That's a top five offense. They're throwing for 238.8, running for 137.2, giving up 24.5. There are holes on the defense, but at least they can outscore you, and the Raiders are not capable of a shootout. They have Brock Bowers, but he needs a better quarterback to get him the ball. And for the other side, they have Irving. They have Evans back. I have Tampa Bay winning this one, 26-20. to 20. And then on CBS at 1 p.m., you have the 2-10 Jacksonville Jaguars versus the 3-9 Tennessee Titans. But the Jags have a 52% chance to win this game. But it's the Titans who are the Vegas favorites, 3.5-point favorites. The over here is 39.5. Jacksonville, they're probably going to be without Trevor Lawrence. That means Mac Jones gets the nod here. But at least Mac Jones has a lot of reps in the NFL. They're averaging 19 points a game. They're giving up 28.3, a bottom five defense. They give up 273 yards through the air. There are going to be lots of opportunities for Tennessee to push the ball down the field. But that's easier said than done. They're only averaging 18.4. They're only throwing for 186 yards per game. They do give up 27.7. So they also have a pretty bad defense, but it's mainly due to their offense turning the ball over on their own side of the field, thus giving the other team the short field. As of right now, Jacksonville, they are getting healthier. Bigsby, Entian, Brian Thomas Jr. And for Tennessee, they have Pollard, Ridley. They don't have a bad team, but they need to play clean football. Obviously, Tennessee should have the edge to win this game. They are the healthier team. Jacksonville will be without Trevor Lawrence here. But for some reason, I think the Jags pull off the upset. I have them winning this one 21 to 17 and finally getting their third win. And then at 4.05 p.m. on CBS, the 7 and 5 Seattle Seahawks. What version of Geno Smith do we get? He has 13 touchdowns, 12 picks. He's playing 50 50 football right now. When he's on, they can vertically push that ball down the field. When he's off, they have a lot of turnovers. We need a clean game from him. They'll be playing the 6 and 6 Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals have a 57.4% chance to win this game. They are two and a half point favorites. Both of these teams are very Jekyll Hyde. They have a good week. They have a bad week. Which version of each team shows up? Obviously, for Seattle, they're averaging 
22.7 points a game, throwing for 250 yards every game, giving up 22.1. And for the Cardinals, they have Kyler Murray. He can sling it, but it's what he can do with his legs extending plays, but always keeping his eye down the field. That can make a difference. They're averaging 22.2, giving up 21.6, which with a much improved pass rush this year. Both of these teams are virtually the same for the for Seattle. They have Kenneth Walker, Smith, DK Metcalf, if he's fully healthy, and for Arizona, Connor McBride, Marvin Harrison Jr. I this game is practically a 50-50 pick. Um, I'm gonna go with Seattle to get the upset. They are the more complete team currently right now. I have them winning this one 24 to 20. And then on Fox at 425 p.m., the 10 and 2 Buffalo Bills. Who wants to play the Bills right now? They're playing some of the best football in the NFL versus the 6-6 six and six LA Rams. Don't underestimate the Rams. Don't judge them by the record. A lot of that was without Cooper Cup, was without Nakua. They have a fully healthy roster right now. They are capable of getting into shootouts. Right now, Buffalo has a 63.1% chance to win this game. They are 3.5-point favorites. The Orton here is 49.5. They have Josh Allen putting up MVP caliber numbers, closing in on 2,700 yards, 20 touchdowns, 5 picks. He also has 7 rushing touchdowns. They're averaging 29.6. That's a top 3 offense. They're only giving up 18.7 points a game. That's a top 8 defense they are top 10 in quarterback pressures they're going to get after Stafford Stafford is the veteran though they're averaging 21.2 giving up 24.2 so obviously they have the deficiency on the defensive side but when they're healthy Williams Atwell Cooper Cup Nakua they have the weapons to get into a shootout with Buffalo but Buffalo has the defense defense does travel on the road I have the Bills winning this one 28 to 21 and then at 425 p.m. on Fox, we have the 4-8 and eight Chicago Bears. They just want to get a win. Since the Hail Mary loss, they've fallen off the rails. But Caleb Williams starting to play a little better as long as that offensive line holds up and as long as he does get rid of the ball when it's time to dump it off. They'll be playing the 5-7 and seven San Francisco 49ers, who they just need to try to get back to 500 when they're, when they're fully healthy. They're the best top-to-bottom roster in the NFL. That's when they're fully healthy. They have yet to be fully healthy this season. They have a 61.5% chance to win this game. Three and a half point favorites over in here is 43 and a half for the Bears. They're averaging 20.1. They're giving up 20 points a game. They have Swift, Moore, Odunze, Allen. Not a bad team, and they have a very good defense. I could see them pulling the upset here easily for San Francisco. Very banged up right now. They're going to need a really good game out of Purdy. He needs to play really good second half football. They basically have to win out to have any type of shot at the playoffs. They're averaging 22.5, giving up 24.6. This is not the team that went to the Super Bowl this past season, but I have them pulling off the win here, getting back in the win column, winning this one 24 to 20. And then our final Sunday night game, but second to last game on NBC at 8.20 p.m., the 8-4 and L.A. Chargers versus the 11-1 and Kansas City Chiefs, the defending champs. This is going to be a defensively focused game. Chiefs have a 62% chance to win this game. Four-point favorites. The over in here is 42.5. The Chargers, just like the Steelers, they play hardball football. They run the ball. They play really good defense. But Herbert's more than capable of getting into a shootout with the Chiefs if that's what they need. He only has one pick so far this year. They're averaging 21.7 points a game. And they have the number one defense in the NFL, only giving up 15.7 points a game. Defense does travel, but they are pretty banged up. They had Ladd McClonkley was hurt. J.K. Dobbins was hurt. They need to get a fully healthy team. That defense should at least give them a shot in this game, keep this game close enough for the offense to get some scores. And for the Chiefs, they're finally starting to get healthy. The Chiefs are a second-half team. Once they get closer to the playoffs, that's when they really get the wheels going. That's what's happening right now. They are starting to click, and they've had one of the best defenses the entire season. Their defense creates havoc, and it creates turnovers, giving their offense the short field. They have Mahomes, Hunt, Pacheco, Kelsey, Worthy. They're starting to get everyone back on that offensive side, and we know what happens once they get to the playoffs. They're a completely different team. I have the Chiefs winning this one, 23-18. But the Chargers defense does always potentially give them a shot here. And our final game of the week, the Monday night game at 8.15 p.m. on ESPN, the 4-8 and eight Cincinnati Bengals versus the 5-7 and seven Dallas Cowboys. Right now, the Bengals, one of the best offenses in the NFL. Cowboys, one of the worst defenses. The Bengals, Burroughs closing in on 3,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, 5 picks, leads the NFL in passing. They're averaging 27.9. Throwing for 264.3, running for 91.7. They got to get the run game going. They are giving up 28.3 points a game. One of the worst defenses. They give up more points than they score, and they score a lot of points. When they're healthy, this roster is loaded. Brown, Chase, Higgins, one of the best wide receiver cores. And for Dallas, their strength used to be 
running game, line, defense. They are bad at all of those. Dax out for the season. They'll have rush in there. They're averaging 20.7 points a game, only running for 85.8. They're giving up 28.3. This is not the top three defense they had last season. Dowdle, he's not the guy. He's only averaging about 40 to 50 yards. C.D. Lamb cannot completely carry this team on his shoulders. I have the Bengals offense making the difference here. They win it 31 to 23. So that's our quick picks for all of our week 14 NFL matchups. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you have any comments, please drop them below and I will respond. Thanks.